I played Elden Ring since day one and spent less than 1000 hours in total so far. As my first Souls game ever, I would say my experience for the first time wasn't very pleasing. Also, not to mention people say this is the easiest Souls game out of the others. Holy damn, people. But this gave me curiosity to try other Souls franchise and this time, it's gonna be Dark Souls 3. Oh, it's Elden Ring all over again, guys. Because I want to. Looking the average playtime of DS3 is 32 hours for the main story and around 96 hours for 100% completion. So I'm gonna try to beat Dark Souls 3 for the first time ever and also to beat it in less than 32 hours or even less than 24 hours if I can. Remember, only for the main story. Can I just... No, we can run away This game has different feels even from the beginning and since I was a bit afraid of the unknown, I picked Herald as my starting class because um, they have spear. Long range equals more safety. I guess. The controls for PC players are horrible, so I have to keymap everything and it took a while honestly. But here we go. Um, so I kind of forgot which class I picked, but the thing is, I play as strength and dex build, you know, the, the normie one, the normie build. Running, press the same button, uh, I don't know which one PC. We'll, we'll see, we'll try. What the fuck? Oh, he's too fast! What is that, dude? No! As a tutorial boss, I'm comparing Gundir to Grafted Sion and the Tree Sentinel. To be honest, he's much more easier than them. Probably because his moves are pretty sharp and not too much combinations. Look at that range, man. That's not real, dog. I did break his poise, but like, I, I cannot repose for some reason. I think it's like a couple of tries, isn't it? We reached the Fireling Shrine. It serves the same purpose as a roundtable hold, but some actions like leveling up, upgrading weapons, flash, and some other stuffs can only be done in this place. So there is no remote upgrades. I know this might sound super normy, but I will keep comparing this game to Elden Ring. Please bear with me, alright? I got used to run through everything and reach the boss right away, but I feel like I got the same vibe right now as when I reached the Stormfell Castle for the first time. High Wall of Lothric was very confusing to me. There are only a few bonfires it seems, and I have to survive while finding some shortcuts. One thing I noticed after an hour, the stamina consumption in this game is insane. This actually gave me a lot of problem later on. Burn it dragon, burn it! Burn them! Ezra, oh, yes. fuck y'all! Whoa, what? It's one of those things. Those Resident Evil stuff, man. After spending a good time in this area, I finally reached the second boss, Vord of the Boreal Valley. His moveset reminds me of Magma Worm for some reasons. Striking on the right time is still quite difficult for me, so then I pulled back to get a familiar weapon, the Claymore. Dang, beating the... Oh my god. I forgot we have Mimic here! Someone told me you can get a weapon quite early, but I didn't reach the requirements, so I'm getting some materials to upgrade my current weapon. Uh, 16 strength and 13 dex. Also, getting those upgrade materials is much harder because not only you have different types of materials, as usual, but some of them can only be acquired by killing this lizard. Dead? Oh yeah, he's dead now. Getting close to him and hiding under his belly probably is the best method. And I believe his massive cake is the best spot to attack. Crack them open. Oh, 
let's go. <laughs> I haven't played this game in so long. Me too. <laughs> Actually, no, I never played this game before. What on earth? Oh, this is a really good animation of death, though. Oh boy, is it the boss battle? I'm not ready yet. I, f I forget what was her name. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. I I've seen someone fight um, the giant bloodhound knight. I forgot what's her name. So this is Vort's other friend, but I wasn't supposed to fight her now. I just want to test things out. I don't think we can fight the dancer now. Moving to the undead settlements, where a bunch of farmers and fat ladies resides. Fuck y'all. Just okay, I got the extra shards. The whole village is actually crucifying me. Oh, I think I know this one. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't particularly look for anything, but I stumbled upon a big ass tree with a bunch of balls on his body. This is an optional boss, but I was mistaking it for a mandatory boss, so I decided to beat him. This specific fight is super annoying because the farmer will keep respawning until I reach phase 2. Wow! And the most annoying part is I need to pop off those balls in order to damage the tree, which is very hard since I couldn't automatically aim at them and sometimes, oh sorry, most of the time, my attacks just completely missed. I wasted around an hour in this fight. Hit and run? Okay, hit and run. Got it. Ah, yes. Ah. The reason I was insisting to beat this boss is because of the reward. It gave me the Hollow Slayer Greatsword. Probably not significantly better than the claymore, but it deals more damage to Hollow, and it was recommended by the viewer. So let me just use it. I'm the OG here. Yeah, you're the OG. <laughs> because no OG is actually. No, actually, you know what? Like there is some OGs sometimes. I think I count the OG viewers are from the Pokemon era. That's the one when I'm uh, when I stopped streaming. Get hit, that's when I'm complaining. Like this. That's actually my fault. Oh, let's go! We did it! Finally, man. Whoa, the dogs, man. Gotta chill. Yo, help me out! I know this guy is a good guy, right? This might be the longest part of the game. I reach Farron Keep, which is the swamp area of the game. This place is inhabited by some mud crabs and terrifying monsters that can walk normally in the swamp, unlike me. Yo, Rykard was here, homie. I guess it was a reminder to me that I was under leveled and I have to beat another boss before progressing to this area. Not a very enjoyable experience. Let's go, look at that. Come on man, where's the next boss? Where's the next boss? Is this the right place? Oh, I see how it is. That is the next boss, Crystal Sage. All right, Crystal Sage, this is the easiest boss so far. Even on second phase, I just have to attack the purple one and everything will be fine. Zero death. No, you're not running away. Okay, Luis, hold on, let me, I need to concentrate, bro. Does Josh come here often anymore? I don't think so. Like he's not like she's not really active on YouTube anymore. At least that's what I know. Oh shit. What the fuck? He's streaming. But tell me, Luis, um, do you still come to Gage's stream? Oh, there we go. He's, he's dead. Almost 5 hours in and I reached the Cathedral of the Deep. I would say the difficulty in this area is on par with the Farron Keep. In Elden Ring, 
I guess just to skip the path to the boss and usually the path in legacy dungeons are pretty short and not too many shortcuts but in DS3, the dungeon part is the harder aspects of the game in my opinion. I feel like I get easily lost in this maze and a lot of traps that startled me most of the time. But I guess exploring more actually gives you more rewards in a way, you know? Okay, there we go. Oh my god, dude. Of course, man. Of course. God damn it, dude. Get the fuck out of here, snail. Or whatever you are. I don't know. They said it's the easiest boss, but I died. So, since my viewers said I was under level, I decided to level up. But unlike Elden Ring that has a specific rune farming location, I have to get my souls manually by getting the Covetous Serpent Ring. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the name. To acquire the talisman, I mean the ring, I have to do the infamous tree jump that surprisingly didn't take that long. Oh, there's a way inside. Oh! Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, I know how to do it. <laughs> just to make sure, just to make sure. Also progressing through Squidward's quest, but I gave up after the fat lady humiliated me. Easy, bro. Like a lot, dude, because like I... This is my second time playing it, by the way. Can I bypass this too? Yes, I can. Oh, no! Fuck you. This is my first time knowing about summoning phantom using an ember and probably my only time using summon for the entire playthrough. And yes, I use summon for Deacon of the Deep. Guys on use, uh, using on the Deacon of the Deep. This boss is supposed to be the easiest, but compared to Crystal Sage, I died a few times by Deacon of the Deep. There's a sign to attack the right one in the middle before the real one showed up in second phase. Pretty straightforward. But I was expecting something crazy in second phase, maybe they merge into one giant priest or something. It's quite disappointing. But hey, I won't complain over an easy fight. I won't let you heal. There we go, let's go! <laughs> oh, it is so pathetic. After leveling up for a bit, I think I'm ready to step my stinky feet to the Farron Keep. And while suppressing my hatred towards this place, I got invaded for the first time. Jared. Fuck, I'm gonna be dead. Dude, I'm activating racist mode right now. How? Is this, this is real player? Is this real player? Man, this guy is so annoying, man. Come on. And he left. Hiding like a pussy. Fuck you, Melody. Anyways, apparently I have to extinguish three burning towers in order to open the door. Which takes a while since I often got lost in this place, but I'll have you guys know, the boss in this area turns out to be my favorite. It's the Abyss Watcher, man. It, like, this guy is so cool. I I watched, like, um, some of the cutscenes, but uh, I didn't know the movesets or kind of thing. But we'll see, we'll see. He is fast, and his opening seems to be a bit vague, and I did spend some time to figure out his window to attack. This is also a very unique fight to me, since at certain point on phase 1, the battle turns into two-way fights between themselves. Go. Phase 2, however, I have difficulties with those fire attacks. They seem to have a bit of delay after the sword slams, so I got hit quite often by those. Ah, oh, fuck, did I... I really hate that one. Let me heal, let me heal! Oh! Sorry, 
with the Abyss Watcher is now dead, I redeem his remembrance to take the Faron Greatsword. The Faron Greatsword, isn't it? This is the one. Yeah, why not? It's zero souls anyway. This is my favorite weapon so far. It has a unique two-handed attack with additional dagger on my left hand. I also okay, intend to use this weapon to so beat the game. Cool, that is so cool. Okay, okay, okay. Two-handed. So basically the two-handed is actually with the dagger. That is so cool, bro. Since I noticed how hard it is to maintain my stamina, I was told to get the Chloranti Ring to boost my stamina regen. It is the equivalent of Green Total Talisman. I don't want to waste their romantic session. There we go. Oh, there we go. I see it. I took back my words for saying Faron Keep is the worst level in the game. This one is. The Catacombs after the Abyss Watcher is definitely the worst place in the game. What is that? Not only I have no idea where to go, the mobs are also very ruthless. Holy fuck, look at that man, that's a bunch of skeletons. I have to rush my way to either look for a boss room or find the nearest bonfire checkpoint. Either way, I get killed quite often before finding those objectives. Oh my god, dude, get the fuck out of here, dude. Oh, thank god. I'm touching the goblet. Ah, this guy. Shh, what the hell? So this boss is like far giant where we damage a certain part of its body. In this case, Wolnir is vulnerable on his wrists. The golden bracelets on both hands are quite sturdy for a couple hits, but after they get broken, it takes a huge chunk of its HP. I would say it's an easy fight. Oh, okay, I see, I see. It's like the Crystallian kind of thingy. Woo! That's it? This area has a lower level dungeon and to access that area, you can destroy a bridge in front of the boss room and climb down with it. It's really good to see an environment interaction in this game. I reached the smoldering lake looking for another optional boss to get them souls. A small gimmick fight outside oh the arena God, that involved a giant serious. crossbow and a dragon sounded warm. Okay. Holy fuck. Oh, it's actually piercing. The bow just went through the body, man. That's why it hit him and hit me as well. Ho 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 ho. The old demon king, one boss that I underestimated. I think everyone agreed at this moment that I was underleveled and underpowered as well, so there are a few options I can do. The first one I did is getting more titanite skills for my weapon. Oh, look at that damage, bro. The other option is by exploring a bit into the dungeon near the old demon king arena. Oh my god, dude. I got a recommendation from a viewer to get the Black Knight Sword that deals more damage to demons. Okay, they, oh, they're, they're having they're having a bad time. Yes, uh, I think. I think, Golem, I... Oh, you can actually... Doing the fucking meteor, bro. Or he's he's a thing. He's doing the thing. Okay, I dodged that. I dodged that magically. Oh god, oh god. Oh, what the hell? This is so cute. Oh, way, Moving to Raya Lucaria. There is nothing much going on in this place. The thing I realize is how strong the normal mobs are, and those monstrous rats are intimidating as hell. So I avoid them at all costs. This level is actually a bit tough in terms of looking for shortcuts, but I'm glad there is one near the boss room. Speaking about boss room, it's pontiff time. Oh 
my god. Ah! Alright. <laughs> Alright. What was the longest fight I said before? Uh, well, whatever it was, Pontiff tops them all. This is the hardest boss in the game, so far. But I think people with exceptional parrying skill will benefit it in this fight. Myself is not included since I'm terrible at parrying. But that only applies on phase 1. Because in second phase, he'll create the shadow that predicts his next move. It's not gonna be easy because the shadow deals the same amount of damage as Pontiff and basically every single move he does will be done twice in a row. Unless you kill the shadow, and that's what I'm trying to do right now. Pontiff has similar vibe to Radagon in my opinion. His moves are sharp and fast but he also has some slow windy roll catch that will punish you whenever you spam roll. A similar trait to Radagon because he's an input reader as well so I couldn't drink my flask at random times. One thing that saved me from this boss is the Faron Greatsword. That brick dancing move really comes in handy on phase 2. With a wide AoE, it will sweep the shadow pretty quick. Oh! Oh my god! Look at that fire. For some reason, I dodged that. Oh, yes. Oh, bro! Did you see that? Like, I... Yeah, still some failed attempts on the dancer. Now, there are two ways of doing this. I could progress to Anar Londo, or I could dive down into Irithul Dungeon to fight Yorm. I pick Yorm because Anar Londo is just so crazy for me. But... Okay, it's a mimic. Shit! No! Come here. Come here, dog. Huh? Yeah! <laughs> okay, alright. Profane capital. Okay, this is... Um... Oh, jeez, the gargoyle, baby. Alright, what should we do now? Fire Giant uh, 1.0. Yeah, more like Rykart 1.0. Apparently, I have to get a weapon next to his throne. It's one of those gimmick fights. Okay, how? Ah, uh, Storm Ruler, where the fuck it is? Fuck! Who the fuck made this fucking... Yeah, whatever. Let's, let's die first. Oh my god. Let's go! I think I'm ready to beat the dancer. Now, I get my ass beat multiple times in multiple different attempts before, but this time, I have to beat her for real. Speaking about ass, I realize Vort has a massive established bakery while the dancer is on the brink of bankruptcy. Dancer is somehow slow, but those slow movements that usually caught me off guard. Oh, god damn it. There was like a big opening for me. All of her moves are dodgeable, but she becomes very intimidating in second phase. Took me multiple tries until I recognized her window to attack. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. This is this is a really bad spot.
That is crazy, I dodged that. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know he can do that. Wow. Did you see that? Ah, fuck yeah! I've been it's time to make my way to Honor Londo. And it's as ruthless as people say. A bunch of silver knights and some mercenaries that I accidentally killed a while ago. Oh shit, what the fuck? He but surprisingly, the whole level isn't as complicated as the Aerithil or even Cathedral of the Deep. And another surprise is how the boss, Eldridge, is one of the easiest boss out there. Fire, fire! Dude, it, this is so annoying. Wow. For some reason, I dodged that. Oh my god, second try, broskies. <laughs> I got teleported back to the Dancer's Arena for some reason. Maybe this is supposed to be the right time to fight her. I probably got ahead of myself, apparently. Dragon Barrax has lesser bonfire as I know, but the shortcuts are pretty easy to spot, so I wasn't having trouble as much as before. This path leading to the next main boss, which is the Dragon Slayer armor, but I'm going for the optional boss, which is Oseros. There is a messed up version where he actually held a baby and crushed it in second phase, but yeah, no wonder it was cut from the game. But this boss honestly far harder than Aldrich, obviously. Phase 1 isn't the problem as long as I get close to him, but second phase, whoo, I got difficulties matching my timing with him. Come on, come here. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, wow. Oh, my God, dude, I... I got stuck, not him! <laughs> oh. Okay, 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 okay. The reason I'm going for him is for the door behind him. There are a few titanite scales in the dark area for my underleveled weapon. There's like two of them? Can I fight one of them? Oh yes. No. Alright, one down. The layout of Dragon Barracks isn't as complicated as other levels, but it could be annoying the first time visiting this place. First of all, the dragons. Somehow they feel majestic and intimidating in DS3. Luckily for me, I didn't have to fight them, but I do have to avoid these crazy mobs that might kill me pretty quick if I wasn't careful enough. For the next boss, coming right up is the Dragon Slayer armor. Yes, this is the armor that was controlled by the giant dragon above. Sorry, it wasn't a dragon, it was a um, butterfly instead. 
This is easily one of my favorite boss in DS3. It has pretty fast moves, but it's a fair challenge in terms of difficulties. It's a hard boss. What the fuck? No! Quite some variety on its opening and some moves has follow-ups depending on the circumstances. The pattern is very similar to Godfrey. Okay, epic. I think the best advice I got is always to stay close to him because on second phase it has a range attacks that is very dangerous. Also, just ignore the butterfly. They don't have the best accuracy in the game. Whoa! Ah! There was... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, baby, let's go! So, Grand Archives it is. This place is huge and there are a bunch of little graveyards and another crystal mage that I try to ignore. I don't really have any trouble going through the entire level, maybe on the rooftop area and dodging these mercenaries, but at the end I reach the twin brothers. Dang, that's Malekith. Probably the same duration as the Dragon Slayer. It took me one hour to beat the hell out of these crippled twins. What the fuck? Honestly, it wasn't a very hard fight, but adapting to Lorien's attack might need some time. The best way is to stay close and stay on his laugh, so he wasn't able to pull out the sudden attack. Took me a couple of tries to realize that. That is crazy, man. It's too late. You missed multiple vi viral steps. Oh no, a viral steps. That's too bad. I really wanna. Maybe on NG plus two though. Okay, all right, let's let's go. So with Lothric hanging from behind, it didn't change anything, except for some magic that are easy to dodge. Holy shit, that was so close. I will stop attacking. God. Hitting their back is a bit hard for me, so I just kill Lorien like before and proceed to kill Lothric after that. One thing I didn't know is I have to kill Lorien to instantly end the fight or else he'll keep reviving his what? brother. Oh shit! Oh no, I know what he's about to do! No! I will not let you... Oh, never mind. That's a lot of hit. That's a lot of damage. Oh. Oh no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. No! It's okay, it's okay. It's not too late. Mark my words. Ash one. The crippled twins is now you dead, are. son. Yeah. Alright, 20 hours in and it's the last boss. Here it is, guys. Oh, Luda's dead, no! I think it will be more than 24 hours after adding more minutes when the timer crashed. So, the last one is the Soul of Cinder. I've heard about this boss already, but I've never seen the fight ever. I made a poll the other day to see which boss is the hardest one in DS3 without DLC, and Soul of Cinder didn't win the vote. Oh my god, he's going full Renala, dude. Oh my god. I'm having a hard time! Alright, not gonna lie, this is one of the hardest boss. Yeah, I took oh back my God. words, okay? Probably on the same level as Pontiff. But compared to Pontiff, the Soul of Cinder's fight oh is God. more intense. Okay, okay. That's why I felt exhausted in only an hour fight. Oh, fuck. Of course, man, of course. Alright, come here. I'm a different man. Wow, I'm not a different man. What's up, Washawat? So at some point, this boss will change his class, and I hate the spear one, and the curved sword one. Magic might be the oh, easiest. Elden Ring build.
secondly annoying uh, with the um, the spear. The spear is like the number one. Oh, there we go. So what we are doing here is we, we are actually waiting for him to switch his um, his build. Oh my god, of course, man. Oh, I think I know how to do this. It's okay. We're gonna have Spear as our opening as well. Oh my god, never mind. On phase 2, I was too afraid of looking for openings, so I just wait for him to leap on me. This is surprisingly happen quite often. I think patience is the key for this specific fight. He's gonna do the thing. There we go. It's AoE. It's actually a grab attack though. Crazy, right? Shit. Yo, what's up, man? Like, welcome in, man. Give me a moment, guys. Give me a moment. Okay. <laughs> that was scary, man. I should have. I shouldn't have pushed my luck. Sorry, I was a bit panicking. Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> Let's fucking go, boys! So there we go, that's the final fight. I might be a little too generous to add extra 30 minutes each for the two moments when my timer got crashed. So it's gonna be 23 hours and 53 minutes. Still less than 24 hours and I'm proud of this result. I was expecting to be at least almost 30 hours. I'm gonna do some other things as well. Probably beating the Nameless King or something. Okay, honestly speaking, Dark Souls 3 has been so fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do enjoy playing Dark Souls 3, honestly. Anyway, yeah, that's all from me and I'm probably gonna play the DLC uh, later on stream before the armored core came out also special thanks to channel members they all gonna be here i think okay well, what's the best position for okay there we go yes there we go join the membership guys so your names will be displayed here or probably just only for this video i don't know but anyway i have stuff to do right now so i have to dip out okay see ya